Yes, I think so. Okay, so those people haven't met Simon before. <coughs> Simon, Simon's never really told me what his day job is. He said, I wouldn't want to know. And, and that's, that makes me want to know even more. <laughs> no. but, but he also, he's one of these sort of mad cat inventors who spends all his time in his garden shed blowing things up. Um, not the family pets. Yeah. But he's made these only the chickens. Only the chickens. Yeah. But he's made these things like giant ballistas and all sorts of stuff. And he's written books. And one of these is called um, something like Arduino Project for the Evil Mad Scientist or the Evil Genius. The Evil yeah. Genius. Okay. And and our first Raspberry Jam, he came and he showed how you could interface a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino together. And you're going to show us yeah. some more cool stuff, expansion boards. So over to you, Simon. Thank you, Alan. Hello everyone. Um, what I was going to do today really is just kind of uh, an overview of a number of different types of um, prototyping board um, and um, this is what we try and hear some. Yeah, you might be able to ask yeah. a question. I've got quite a different to Is this? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so we can we can spot the difference later on. Okay. Yeah. Is this? Yeah, it's pretty similar. No? Okay. Well, this does sound good. Oh, right, okay, yeah, you've got extra, extra connected. Yeah, so really just to kind of give you a survey of some of the options that are available for um, expanding the, you know, the getting access to the GPIO uh, connectors on your Raspberry Pi and the kind of things you can, you can do with it. And then uh, towards the end, I'm going to give you a little uh, demonstration of um, a board expansion board I've been working on, which is specifically aimed at building rovers, uh, robots that wander around uh, using Raspberry Pi. So essentially, you know, the main feature of it is that it's got a motor driver on it. Um, it's in fact, it's the same chip as you use. On, uh, yeah, it's the most common one. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the GPIO connector, um, it's this little area you've got on a Raspberry Pi. I've covered it up online, but you all know where it, I'm sure you've all seen it, the little row of pins on there. And you've got um, a load of different um, general purpose IO pins that you can use for as digital inputs and outputs. Um, not for analog inputs, if you're used to using an Arduino and expecting to be able to read an analog voltage and get a, get a number for whatever, for whatever uh, analog voltage is at that particular pin. No analog uh, pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, but these general purpose I.O. pins, and also some of these I.O. pins have additional purposes. So there's the ones up here, 14, 15, the TX and RX for transmit and receive for a, um, a TCL serial uh, communication, and then there's some for a, other types of serial bus, the SDA and SDL for I2C, uh, a bus standard called I2C. So there's various different things that you can connect onto, onto here. One of the things about the Raspberry Pi GPIO um, is that it goes straight to the system on a chip, the rather delicate chip center of the Raspberry Pi that does everything. And whereas as on a, an Arduino, if you draw too much current from one of the I.O. pins and, and kill it, you haven't killed your whole Arduino, you can just take out the processor chip, put in a new one for three or four pounds. Whereas if you do the same trick to your Raspberry Pi and you kill your main um, the system on the chip, that's it, that's the MP Pi basically. Really. So you have to be a little bit careful. Um, it's somewhat more delicate something like an Arduino. So that's why people look at, um, well, they either don't care and they just come sort of wing it, hope it'll be all right and connect all sorts of things to it, or they buffer the pins in some way so that you're not connecting directly to the Raspberry Pi, you're actually putting some other electronics in between that can make sure things stay safe for it. Okay. So there's really the, the kind of boards that you can get for plugging into your Raspberry Pi, really sort of fall into two categories. There's, if you like, um, prototyping boards, which are really just give you an area on the board where you can solve your own components onto it. Um, ones that fall into this, this category is there's um, something called the Pi Cobbler. Uh, I'll show you what's in a minute. Uh, the Pi Plate and the Humble Pi. So I'm sure there are many more by now, but these are kind of three different ones that you can get that are already available. So the Pi Cobbler is, um, this is actually, this, off. this is what all a, a Pi Cobbler is. It's a piece of ribbon cable 
one end of which goes into the GPIO connector on your Raspberry Pi, and the other end has a little circuit board uh, with a load of pins <coughs> on it that are clearly labelled, and it just brings out the various connections that you've got on your uh, Raspberry Pi GPIO connector, and allows you to do this, plug it into solve on the spreadboard, so that you then, if you take this bit off, you can kind of experiment with your breadboard, and I've got here a little um, serial LED display, and um, you can wire that up to various connections on the Raspberry Pi using the uh, using the solar spreadboard, or put transistors if you need to drive a relay, or you put whatever other electronics you need to on the little solar spreadboard. So it's it's quite nice, it's not very expensive, and it's, it's fairly sort of convenient, and this little holder gives you a nice little placeholder for all, where all the different connections are on the GPIO connector. So, um, I mean, a fair, an even lower cost alternative to this is to actually use, um, instead of these jumper leads, which are male to male, um, because you can actually get ones that are male to female, so that you can plug the connectors into your uh, breadboard here, and then you can have just the socket connectors that go straight over the pins on the GPIO connector, so that's kind of another, another way of accomplishing the same thing. Um, yes, so uh, on my blog, I won't fire it up now because I've only got one Raspberry Pi and it's buried underneath there somewhere. But this is a little um, digital clock um, that I made with uh, a, a, a serial, a little serial display you've got here and the Pi cobbler connected to the Raspberry Pi. Um, I mean, it displays the time, but you could actually have it displaying anything. This one, four digits, a seven second display, which is actually not very much room. But uh, you, you can have some fun. You could count the number of um, emails you've got in your inbox that are on red. <laughs> How many tweets that have been mentioning the word Raspberry Jam in the last minute? That kind of thing. Anyway. So the um, another one. Um, that's the the cobbler and the pie plate are both products from um, Adafruit. Um, so um, an American company. People come across Adafruit. Yeah. Okay. They, they have some nice stuff, and they're one of, for an American company, they seem to have got quite interested in the Raspberry Pi, Pi quite early, uh, more so than um, Spark Plug and made sort of rivals in this particular area. Okay, they, um, so this costs about £12, um, they're available now, it's got a little area just in this corner here where you can put a little um, surface mount chip, and then it has pins broken out to a tenth of an inch pitch, but, so that you can then actually you know, use something with them without having incredible soldering skills. So. And then the rest of it is just a um, prototyping area. Um, it's quite friendly towards uh, a dual inline integrated circuit so you can solder on there and that bit. And there's just a general part over here. Some of these screw terminals you can just use for whatever you like, but most of them are actually connected directly to the um, GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. <coughs> So, for example, there is room on here for you to put a little voltage regulator um, so that you can attach a battery by these screw terminals that would then power your Raspberry Pi, for example. The Humble Pi, um, this is a product from a company called Siseco uh, in Leicester. And um, they, it's, um, I mean, there's not much to it, but it's incredibly good value for money really. You, you get a um, you get a circuit board and you get the GPIO connector and then that's pretty much it really. So it's rather similar in idea to uh, to the Humble Pi, other than it doesn't have the uh, so as, other than it doesn't have the screw terminals or anything like that. So if you if you just can fit all of your electronics for your particular project on here then you just you know, plug them in and solve them once this is a uh, prototype. Um, also, quite interestingly, there's an area up here um, specifically for a voltage regulator um, with a capacitor so that you can put either side of it, um, so that you can, and then you can cut, you can patch that through to the um, 5 volt connector uh, pin on the Raspberry Pi GPIO. And again, you could make yourself a little power supply. So these um, three sockets here fit one of the you know the barrel type DC power sockets you can plug into. So you can plug one of those in there and then you can just use any kind of, um, you know, not any power supply, but a power 
pacify. So you end up with a typical dodge strangulator, you know, something like a 9 volt or a 12 volt DC uh, pacify, instead of having to have a 5 volt USB pacify for your electrical pipe. So you could probably do some, you could probably integrate your relay power down type thing to the board on there. So the other, uh, you know, kind of boards you can get actually has some electronics on them. Because the thing about all of these is they're entirely passive. There's nothing. There's no electronics on it. That's just for you to solder your own electronics onto. So some of the the boards that actually have buffering or added components on them are the um, Pi Face, which is the one we were comparing a few moments ago. Um, another one called Slice of Pi O. Um, Gert board, which is like, which is probably the, as close there is to a, an official Raspberry Pi expansion board. Um, and one that I'm uh, promoting primarily because I needed something like that to go with um, the book I'm writing at the moment, or the Raspberry, Raspberry Robot board, which is what's um, behind this uh, little robot that I'll show you a bit later. So the Pi Face, um, that's this one. <coughs> Actually, I'm going to pass these around actually. Uh, You've got to promise to give me them all back at the end. <laughs> <laughs> count them out, count them in. <laughs> Expander. So rather than it basically ignores most of the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi and has a little uh, serial interface using the ITC uh, serial interface on the Raspberry Pi. So basically, just using two pins of the Raspberry Pi to drive a port expander that gives you 16 IO pins. Um, we're quite happy actually. We've got Mike Cook here today, who's, who's uh, one of the gods of the Arduino world. <laughs> And I think you've done some experimenting with um, this chip as well. I've used it a lot. Yeah. 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 It's quite economical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not costly chips, um, and they're yeah. it's quite a good, good approach. Uh, and similarly, um, this, the Pi Face, as well as having the I2C um, port expander on it, also has a, a, a Darlington driver chip that has a load of. Um, Darlington pair transistors that provide up to half an amp for each channel that are eight of the outputs, which, is, which means that you can have you know, absolutely no trouble driving the relay directly with it, for example, and um, ice lots else really. So, that's kind of okay. Do you mind if I just yeah. add a little bit? It's perhaps worth pointing out that it, it's a lot more, it's considerably a lot more than, say, the, the Pi plate, but, but in doing so, that, that one. Yeah, you, you could use that in a classroom sort of situation where it, it's just very much wired in straight yeah. away. There's there's no soldering required to get something from the beginning. And yeah. it works. They they built a bit where it integrates very nicely with Scratch yes. and with Python, yeah. so that you're you're pretty much straight away being able to interface and, and do robotics projects. Whereas the other ones. But yeah. the bare bones ones would be really for somebody who really knew what they were doing. Yes, yeah. so the ones I've spoken to up to yeah. spoken about up to now are for making your own electronics from scratch. You, you have to solve them onto the board. Um, yeah, the Pi Face is has been developed with the intention of it being used in education. Uh, and, and, and as Alan says, there's a, a library that goes with it, the Pi Demo design integration and um, multi with scratch as well. And, and Andrew's even had teachers down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at what he's doing with it and suggest project ideas and that kind of thing. Um, but if you if you just want to get some LEDs working yeah. or a motor, it's a very expensive way to go. If that's all you ever wanted, it's an expensive way. To, you buy a lot of functionality that you might not use, but with that comes a lot of protection. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they even tested it saying if we had to solve this, this as a kit and people put it together themselves and they put the chips the wrong way around, would that kill their Raspberry Pi? So Okay. 
Um, this is another um, product from Siseco, uh, and it, again, it's very cheap, six pounds. Um, it's available now, and it uses the same port expander as the uh, Pyface uses. Um, it doesn't, unlike the Pyface, it doesn't have a big, um, it doesn't have the Darlington driver chip or anything with it. So that's that one. Um, but you know, for some projects, it'd be a, you know nice little, nice little, nice way of working. So you basically got the there's a separate row of ground pins next to the output pins or the input pins, whichever you want to use them as. So you could actually put header sockets in both of them as well. And then if you were using some of them as outputs, you could, well, with a series resistor, you could put a, an LED directly from one to the other, for example, for driving. So, so a very low cost um, little uh, expansion port, and it's buffered, so you're, you're not going to be damaging the pie if you stick to using the pins that come from here. It also brings, breaks out a load of pins from the Raspberry Pi itself on the other side. So this is like the dangerous side, and this is like the do what you like side. Really. Um, none of the ones I've talked about so far have any analog input. The GERT board, as I was saying before, is kind of the official um, board, the expansion board for Raspberry Pi. I think you can actually pre-order it now on the Farnell website. I don't know when it's actually going to be... But mine is promised to be on the 15th of October. Okay. Is this a Raspberry Pi promise or a real promise? It's <laughs> <laughs> a Farnell promise. Okay. It's <laughs> better, often more reliable than the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's um, it, it's quite an interesting board, really. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping to get hold of one, and I've, I've not been able to. But um, I've been... Uh, so all I've really wanted to go off is have But the basic idea is that um, it does have a little, um, I think these are probably the analog to digital converter, digital to analog converter chips on it. Um, it has um, an H bridge motor driver um, for doing this kind of malarkey. Um, 12 little LEDs attached to it, uh, three push switches, um, and again, it's intended as a board for use in primarily an education setting. Soldering. It also had, and this is one of the things that wasn't quite clear exactly how it would work, but kind of a patch area where you could kind of link up, link the, link different parts of the board up in different ways. And, um, which is, so ultimately, it's kind of the Rolls Royce of the expansion boards. It's got everything on it that, you, that you're likely to use, um, and it's um, so that, you know, you get, it's very configurable. So you can sort of set it up how you like. Um, I would imagine it. There is the, the user manual for it is you know, quite a thick beast already, so I think it's fairly really well documented. Board. So just, just a quick one. Mm. Um, I've just looked it up on Farnell. Okay. It's gone up to £46.22, which is probably nearer what they. I was surprised that 30 quid was quite cheap. For yeah, I wouldn't think they'd make it for 30 quid. And 46 22 sounds oh. about right, but that's. Yeah. You see, it's a difficult sell, isn't it, when your Raspberry Pi costs? The two versions, one was going to be a kit, one was going to be pre-built. Oh, the good boy. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know. Oh, is that, is that going to be pre-built, or is it here? Oh. Sam, can we make it? Oh, so we can do a demonstration. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Oh, okay. I attached it to my Raspberry Pi, I can't take it off. Should I be worried that um, there's metal contact between these and uh, the head of this? That's a great yes. question for afterwards. Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I'm overrunning a bit. This is the board that I've been working on. Um, I called it the Rusty Robot Board. And it's intended primarily for driving little robots like this. It doesn't have an awful lot on it other than a, a motor driver. Um, it also has a little hex buffer that it uses um, for um, partly to help with the motor driver, but also to provide um, a couple of um, buffered, well, four buffered outputs, two of which are connected to LEDs. Um, it also brings out the I2C serial header and the, um, and the serial serial header. 
uh, here. The main reason I wanted to bring out the serial header is that you can get a very nice little um, serial rangefinder, um, which unfortunately needs a little tiny adapter board, and you can plug it into the serial connection on the front so that your robot can tell how far things are away. If it was angled slightly different, they could tell where the edit table was. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not going to do that. Um, so this um, will hopefully be um, manufactured by Sparkcom in the States and available through their distribution network. So here we've got um, a little 3-inch LCD display with a Raspberry Pi doing its boot-up sequence on it. Um, We've then got uh, the Raspberry Pi itself, we've got my board attached to it there, uh, and then this little monitor is powered from the battery sensor here, as is the um, Raspberry Robot board, and then the Raspberry Robot board is supplying the power to the Raspberry Pi itself. So it's gradually beating up, hopefully. Um, this dongle here is actually a, um, a, a, key, a wireless keyboard. I'm not sure why that's a good one. It's just um, paper trying to do my best. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is not to let the rugby pie know it's a live demo. <laughs> yeah. Demonstrate maybe 10 to 9 or before we open oh, that possibility. <laughs> it might have to be. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, actually, I think it's it is boosting now. I yeah, don't know what I've done with my keyboard. I'm probably going to have to have this. I've got a wireless one here. Well, have you? Yeah, I'm sure. So I don't know if you can see there, we've got a distance meter. You probably can't. It says distance 41 inches and the points to something on here. And that's 182 inches to Alan over there. Um, is that okay? Could I just try that right now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the same one, is it? Is that, will that work with any dongle? Oh, uh, it's the dongle's in the bar. All right. It goes reasonably fast, some of the people down here, I think. And it has a kind of a safety feature on it that. Um, Only works if it's going forward, but it's supposed to stop itself when it's about to hit something. Maybe not in this case. Ooh. I think I need driving lessons to get out the door. There we go. For the benefit of viewers at home, <laughs> it's telling you, it's reporting what distance it is away from objects. Yeah. So you could have some fun with that actually and have it spin around on the spot and produce a map of the room if you could kind of keep track of the angle of where you were. Okay, I need to call it there, don't I? Simon always never lets us down, he always surprises us with new things. So you, you may have a, ma a maze solving algorithm on it next time? Possibly. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Um, very quickly, could I also say that um, I don't have some PCBs for the people for the Raspberry Robot. Ah. So if anybody's interested at the end in kind of building their own one and taking one, if they can report back to me, then 
And if they need to load my main VM. If they need to go into a cache point, how much should they have? No, no, these are dead and free. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm also selling my books and they're not free. Okay. <laughs> so we have a book signing session as well.